Hello everyone, Mr Hollick here again. I thought I'd read you a book today called The Snorg and the Sailor, which you can see has been read many times by me to my children, and I thought you guys would like it. And it's an absolutely fantastic book, um, and it's by a writer called Will Buckingham, and a great illustrator by Thomas Doherty. And this is The Snorg, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a snorg before, he's got his samphire here and his pot, and here we've got our sailor, and it's the snorg and the sailor, and it's a book all about adventures and taking risks and doing things that we talk about at St. Greg's. So it says, there's the snorg. The snorg lived alone in an ugly little house on the marsh. Here's the marsh. Every day he snuffled along the shoreline, picking samphire, there's samphire, to make soup. His webbed feet sank into the mud and the wind made lonely sounds as it came in from the sea. So you can see him looking a bit lonely there, a bit sad. Every evening, the snorg huddled in his chair by the fire. How lucky I am, he muttered, to have nobody to share my fire. He took a slurp of salty soup. How nice. He said, to have soup to myself. So he's not really into sharing the snorg at the moment, is he? But one night, a terrible storm blew up. The snorg was listening to the howl of the wind when he heard a sound at the door. Knock, 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 knock. Nobody had ever knocked at the snorg's door before. He shuffled over and opened it just a crack. I wonder who's going to be there. Outside in the rain was a bedraggled creature. I like that picture. It's quite cosy in the Snorg's house. And there, bedraggled, is our sailor. A little rabbit. I like that word, bedraggled. Sort of wet and tired and hungry and not in a great way. Great way. Hello, said the creature. I'm a sailor. My boat has been washed ashore in the storm. Can I come in? No, said the snorg. Snorgs don't have visitors. But you've got such a nice house, said the sailor, and he marched right in. He sat down in the snorg's chair and warmed his toes by the fire. There he is. The snorg harumphed. That's a great word. <laughs> like that. <laughs> and he went, to sit, he went and sat in the bath. Mmm, samphire soup, said the sailor. May I? Snorgs don't share soup, said the snorg. But the sailor had already helped himself. Delicious, he said. I'm on an adventure. I'm on an adventure, said the sailor. Do you want to hear about it? No, thank you, said the snorg. Snorgs don't like adventures. But the sailor told him anyway. The snorg pretended not to listen. Looks like he's sort of half listening here into the sailor's great tail. He's getting very excited now, the sailor. The sailor saved the best story till last. It was a particularly terrible and exciting tale about an island that was really a whale and about whirlwinds and water spouts and about a fearsome sea monster. But right in the middle... The clock on the wall struck eight. It's eight o'clock there. Bedtime, shouted the snorg. Bedtime, said the sailor. But what about the story? If you have to, you can tell me the rest in the morning, said the snorg. Snorgs always sleep at eight o'clock. That night, the snorg had dreams more colourful and wonderful than any snorg had ever dreamed before. Look at his wonderful dreams. I like it that he goes to sleep in his bathtub. <coughs> and he's having all these lovely, lovely dreams about fun things to do. Look at that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I don't think he's ever done any of these things. He's finally dreaming about fun things. The snorg woke up after, long after the sun had risen. He felt happier than he could ever remember feeling. But when he peered out of his bathtub, 
He saw only his cold house, his cold fireplace, and his pot of cold soup. The sailor was gone. Sailor, he called, I'm ready for the rest of the story. But the only answer was the lonely moan of the wind. The snorg hurried to the door and peered out. Can you see some footprints there? The beach was deserted. Nobody there. Then on the horizon, he spotted the tiny triangle, there it is, of a disappearing sail. Sailor, he shouted, wait! I have to hear the end of the story. But the boat just bobbed further away. Oh, if only I had a boat, the snorg cried. Then he had an idea. And soon he was paddling towards the horizon. Sailor, wait, he cried. I need to know what happened to the whale. Now, can you guess what's going to happen now? When he was far out to sea, he suddenly ran aground, so he hit ground. Who put this island here, he muttered. To zoom out a bit now, look. He clambered out and pushed the boat back into the water. Sailor, I need to know what happened with the whirlwind. He just started paddling again when he noticed the breeze ruffling his fur. It's a bit more than breeze, isn't it? Sailor, wait, he cried. I need to know what the sea monster did. But his voice was drowned out by the wind. The waves towered higher and higher. Sailor, where are you? The snore cried. At that moment, one enormous wave picked him up, spun him round and swept him onto dry land. There he goes. Poor old Snorg. I like the way the sea monster carefully puts his pot down with him. He's still got his pot in his bathtub. The Snorg peered out of his bathtub. He's feeling pretty shocked, I imagine. And there, by a crackling fire, was the sailor making soup. Hello, Snorg, said the sailor. Are you on an adventure? Absolutely not said the snorg. Snorgs don't have adventures. I've just come to hear the end of the story. Ah, said the sailor, offering him a bowl of soup. But the story hasn't ended yet. The snorg stamped his foot. Oh, but I have to know what happens next, he cried. The sailor scratched his chin. Hmm. Well, in that case, you'll just have to come with me. We sail at dawn. And I like this picture. I like the way the crab's just getting involved. And there you can still see the, the bathtub in the background and his pot. And what an extraordinary story it turned out to be. Still got the sea monster following them. There's the snore being towed along by the sailor. And then this is all their adventures. This is what they go on to do. So the Snorg does end up having amazing adventures and they're a lot like his dreams, aren't they? Absolutely fantastic book. I love that book so much. And there you go. So that is by Will Buckingham. I know he's got another book out, which I've not read. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, I'm sure it's very good. So I hope you enjoyed The Snorg and the Sailor. It's probably my favourite ever picture book. I absolutely love it. And as I said, you can see we've read it lots and lots of times in our house. Enjoy! Bye-bye!